All right, everyone, it's Logan here again, and the time has finally come. I'm transitioning. So the problem here was that I just could not make these accurate enough. Um, I just don't have the ability to be within millimeters. What was happening is these are off by literally just a millimeter or two. And as, I don't know if you can see it here, but it's at an angle. And there's just, there's no real way to correct that unless I remake them and hopefully get it in the middle. I know someone with more patience and uh, perhaps better instruments than me could get it. But instead, what I did is I had these professionally cut. So this here, and there's still more work to do. There's still a little bit more cutting to do on these. But it's stuff that I can do manually, stuff that doesn't have to be so precise um, that you have to use a laser for. So these pieces are these that are going to hold the bearing. These pieces are the inside, the actual structure. And here are the brakes, which I was going to have made anyway. I still have to cut the holes there. But uh, those are going to go right there on both sides. Well, actually, in between here and here. Uh, and I'll probably have some bike brakes that go on either side of the tire and clamp down. So, uh, I'm gonna get going to get to work here, and I'll be back once it's finished. So, I got the first one assembled. It is here. You can see uh, it's not 100%. I just got it together to actually make sure it works. I only got two of the four screws in, although all four do go in. Uh, this has to be tighter in here. I just kind of slapped it together quick to make sure it worked, but boy, does that spin nice. And it'll spin even better once this is uh, actually tight together. Um, obviously, the tire is not in there. Eventually, the tire is going to sit properly in there. And these are the brakes. So I think I'm actually going to use some bike brakes, uh, at least to start off. Uh, my plan is actually to make some electromagnetic brakes. So I'll actually have like a reverse solenoid, you know, it'll basically be a, uh, a coil that pushes a magnet on the back of the brake down. And it'll be a little bit easier to operate and I won't have to make it pneumatic then. But, oh man, that's nice. Now the magnets aren't in there, but the stator is in there, as you can see. And, whew, I'm excited. So, next up, I have to put the screws into all this. Uh, the bearings are in the, the two of those, uh, the two end pieces there. But uh, I got to assemble the rest of it, get the screws in there, obviously get the tires on there and the magnets on there. And uh, there's a small possibility I could actually make a pneumatic tire uh, if I were to seal this, these gaps in between there. Um, I may be able to make an air-filled tire and then I'd have to, of course, put um, something to, to actually fill it with, but uh, that'll maybe be in the future. Um, right now, I'm just happy to have this part finished. So, well, I'll be back once uh, that one's finished. So I got it all together. It's not completely finished, but man, does that look good. In fact, listen to this. Oh, that's so smooth. But there is something to watch out for. That, that rotation. I thought I'd use this to talk about, uh, to talk about cogging torque, which is a, a lesson I haven't really mentioned before. But something called cogging torque is affecting this motor. It's making the shaft spin. Now the reason the shaft is spinning is actually because it's not held down. Um, in the final version of this, I'm basically going to brute force it. What I mean by that is I'm going to end up putting a screw uh, or some sort of uh, bolt or whatever right through this. I'm going to be cutting some holes through it. It'll go right through and it'll keep it from rotating. That'll be on, on both sides here. But what cogging torque is? So if you look at the other example here, um, you can see there's the magnets and the stator teeth. And Whenever a magnet is directly and fully aligned with the stator teeth, it likes to stay there. The magnetic field is passing from the magnet through the stator teeth 
and out the side and back up around it through the other magnet. So it's going in a little circle. When the steel is completely in front of the magnet, you're getting the most force passing through the steel. Therefore, it's attracting them the most, and it tries to stay in that particular position. When it rotates and there's a gap in between there, there's less magnetic force going through any one stator, uh, stator tooth, and it's spread out, so there's less force. And that alternation of forces ends up creating what's called a cogging torque. And that's bad. For a couple of reasons. One, what this means is it's putting force on this shaft. Now, like I said, I can get around that, but that means that at low speed, see at low speed, the shaft turns with it. So even if there's something stopping it, it'll have a resistance to turning at low speed. So it won't be able to turn at a very low speed unless it has a very high uh, torque, basically a lot of power going through it. So there's two ways to get around that. One is to brute force it like what, what I'm doing. The other way is to do something called skewing. And you can either skew the teeth, like this old motor here, or you can skew the magnets in the same way. But basically, let's say you had the same size magnet here. Uh, instead of being over just one tooth or uh, two teeth, whatever, it's over one, two, three, four teeth because it's going to go actually five, because it would be going from basically this point straight down to this point over here. So I'm sorry, yeah, four. One, two, three, four. So it's making it much more smooth because the magnet isn't attracted to any one particular tooth. It's got the same amount of metal under it uh, the entire time. So that's actually the best way to do it. Uh, but if you can get custom magnets built, that works perfectly fine too. A um, little bit more complicated to do it like this. I didn't bother doing that because to be able to line it up and still to be able to cut it and then line it up properly is, is really difficult to do. Uh, so, and also because this doesn't have to operate at low speeds, it's not that big a deal. Now there are a few types of motors that actually do benefit from cogging torque. One is called a stepper motor. And basically every time it's activated, it'll turn one position, little by little by little. And that's actually by design. You might want it to snap into an exact position. A clock is a great example. Uh, you want it to hit, some clocks go continuously all around, but other clocks on the second hand or the minute hand, they're going to go, mm, mm, mm. they're going to go to each position around the clock. Uh, but that'll be a different, uh, an entirely different video down the line here once I get this working. But for now, there we go. So yeah, that's just the, uh, the screws I haven't put in all the way. So it's working. So my next step here is to actually cut the holes in here to hold it in place uh, one, and then lob off the extra pieces here. Once that's done and I make sure and I verify that the motor is actually spinning, which I will show you, then I'm actually going to cut out some of this because my guess is this thing weighs probably about four pounds maybe. Um, maybe a little bit more than that um, when you count the actual the stator itself, but probably weighs somewhere around three and a half, four pounds. And that's a lot. <laughs> so it's it'll reduce the performance of the motor. So I, I don't need all this aluminum for strength you know the the entire go-kart won't be more than i don't know 250 pounds i think at the most so it doesn't need all the strength i'm going to be cutting out sections of this and then just covering them up with something light and uh, but the, here's the brakes and they're going to be squeezing in right there it's looking beautiful so i'll be back once i got it turning all i have to say is oh yeah does that not look awesome? <laughs> oh, so it's obviously not entirely finished. I have to get another one of these on the other side, but that's holding it down. I still have to cut these off. This side's going to be a little bit tougher to do because I still have to, I have to pull all those wires out and then drill the hole and then cut it and then pull the wires back through. This is only one phase running at, uh, 
four volts using 0.4 amps. So, actually, yeah, the final version is going to be 24 volts. There'll be two of them. Yeah, never. I'll worry about that later. So this is just testing. I'm about to run th run it through its paces up to, you know, at least 12 volts, if not 24 right now. I don't know if you can hear it on here. There is a slight clanking sound. What that is is actually because I taped the magnets down. As it goes around, they're clanking back up against the back. They're attracted to the, the magnet and then back. So they're going like that. Um, that'll be solved in the final. Uh, once I glue them down, they won't move. But, uh, yeah, so you, even a little bit more efficiency. But uh, there we go. So that's uh, the, ne the plan for the next week or so. And then, of course, finishing this one. But uh, thanks for checking it out. Uh, please like it if you like it. Dislike it if you didn't. Let me know what else you want to see. But trust me, there's a lot more coming. As soon as this is finished, I'm going to start working on the go-kart itself. It's going to be awesome. But uh, other than that, have a great day.